So we've talked about drop ceilings in office spaces a number of times already, and I think it's just worth taking a minute to say, uh, all right, why drop ceilings? Why, why do we always have these? Uh, you know, I think we're all pretty tired of drop ceilings and everybody wants to have something new uh, to, to put. But one of the reasons they exist is that they just answer a lot of questions. Uh, so whether they're good or bad is sort of uh, beside the point for the exam. Uh, the main thing is you understand why people put those drop ceilings in. Uh, so uh, we were talking earlier about the idea of plenums. So that plenum is that, uh, that idea where you're essentially making the space above a ceiling, below the deck, part of that return air system. Uh, so I can put the actual uh, ductwork farther back uh, away from, uh, from the supply ducts and so I don't get that crossing problem. And every time uh, I have air that gets up into that ceiling space through one of those uh, open diffusers, uh, that, uh, that air can sort of go around the structure, it can go around the lights, it can go around the sprinklers. It doesn't have to be uh, you know, in a duct in order for it to get to that return air duct system. Uh, so that plenum, uh, to make that really work effectively, kind of needs that ceiling structure in order to create the right pressures in order to make that uh, really sort of flow and work. You can do a, a plenum concept without the ceiling, but it creates a series of other issues. So generally, if you're talking plenums, you need the ceiling. The other big thing with those drop ceilings is the acoustic control that they provide. If we uh, are in a sort of busy office space and people are talking on the phone and people are typing on their computers and uh, people are having conversations by the water cooler and all those sounds and you know copy machines going and all the things that happen in an office, there's a lot of noise that's happening. And if you think about what that uh, ceiling surface is, if you imagine just for a minute, if let's say instead of uh, a typical uh, type of uh, material that they use for the uh, for the drop ceilings. Let's say it was all glass. You had a fully glass ceiling. Uh, that glass ceiling, the sounds would bounce really uh, easily and dramatically, and you would feel each of those different conversations. You'd hear each of the different conversations. You'd be able to tell all the words uh, that people are talking. Like it's one thing to hear noise. It's quite another to be able to actually uh, distinguish different words because it's really hard if you're working on your thing and somebody else is talking near you and you can hear all the words, it's hard for your brain not to just start to listen to those words. Uh, so the idea of these drop ceiling panels is they have a kind of rough surface. They have little uh, nooks and crannies in them and they have a little, little bit of, uh, of texture to them so that as uh, the sound is incident on it, that sort of vibration of sound uh, gets to it, it bounces in multiple directions. Instead of having that direct clean bounce, uh, where if it was a, a hard, flat surface, uh, it bounces in all different ways. And so all of that noise becomes kind of a white noise. It just kind of becomes a mix of sounds. You don't get that spot where you can literally hear the exact words that somebody is saying on the other side of a, of a work carol or something like that. So uh, the acoustics plays a big role in uh, why a lot of offices uh, put these things uh, in. Another issue is just maintenance. As you're going along and buildings, things happen, uh, there's pipes up above the ceiling, there's uh, uh, you know, air ducts that have to be adjusted every once in a while, there's things that you have to be able to get to, uh, things leak, uh, get pipes uh, cause damage. Uh, it's one thing if I can just sort of pop out a ceiling tile and jump up and f have somebody fix, fix something and then put the ceiling tile back in. First of all, it's much more cost effective from a maintenance standpoint for the building. Uh, but also if I, you know, let's say that uh, ceiling tile got damaged by whatever the leak was, uh, I can throw that one away and just get a new one and put it up as opposed to having to take down an entire ceiling and put a whole new ceiling up. And so it's a way of sort of controlling costs, uh, controlling both costs from a, um, the material costs of uh, replacement, but also the labor costs of somebody being able to get access to uh, all these uh, different elements that are actually up in the ceilings. You know, we have a tendency to sort of forget that, you know, we think of the walls and the ceilings as these, you know, important planes uh, and there's sort of solid things behind them, solid walls, solid ceilings. 
but in fact, of course, they're most of the time uh, voids, and those voids are filled with utilities. They're filled with electricity and water pipes and all sorts of things going on in there. And so the idea of having an easy way to get access to them is actually pretty handy uh, and uh, used often, especially in something that gets shifted around as often as an office space does. For uh, residential, you don't typically need that much uh, access in, in that same sort of way. So it doesn't really fit in the residential setting, at least not as sort of obviously. In an office setting, it has a pretty uh, simple and straightforward uh, logic to it. And then while there are certain aesthetic issues, mostly that we're just tired of these drop ceilings, there are certain advantages to uh, having a grid on your ceiling. And one of those advantages is, well, like we just said, there's a bunch of stuff up behind there. So I'm going to have to be able to have access uh, up to the pipes, up to the uh, damper control for the ductwork. You know, there's going to be spots where you have to be able to get up, which means if you don't have a drop ceiling, if you have a drywall ceiling, I'm going to have access panels at various locations. And so sometimes it's actually better to have this nice clean grid, which just becomes sort of a field, if you will. It just becomes a, a you know, simple grid that you sort of dies away in your, in your brain. You don't, you don't think about it, it's just a simple idea. As opposed to a beautiful clean drywall ceiling that I then see three different access panels at different locations where they sort of pop out and become part of a design if you didn't even mean them to. So uh, the idea of the drop panels, like I said, everybody's tired of them, uh, but they do answer all of these kinds of issues, uh, and that is a very important idea. Uh, you know, you have to be able to control acoustics. The plenums are very useful. Uh, we definitely need to be able to maintain our buildings. We want to be able to not have to throw huge amounts of material away just because we had a little tiny water leak somewhere. Uh, so like, there's a bunch of advantages to these systems, you can go without them, but then you still have to figure out how you're going to answer all of those issues uh, if you don't have those drop ceilings.